I tried training mountain car continuous and after training it just got stuck at the bottom. Let's talk about why and how to get the agent to train. A quick reminder of how we approach solving mountain car with Q learning. We start by dividing up the map into sections. For simplicity, I'm just gonna make three divisions and we can call this uh, state zero, state one, state two, and state three. The car starts out in state zero. Let's say it chooses to go to the left side. Every action that the car takes, it incurs a penalty. I'll just say it incurs a penalty of minus one. Once it's in state one, let's say it goes back this way, we get another penalty, and then it goes to state two, we get another penalty, and then finally it gets to our goal here, and it gets a hundred reward. The reward, let's say it gets discounted, and that is the end of our first episode. Now how do we carry the reward back all the way to the beginning? Well, we need to do that in subsequent episodes. In subsequent episodes, the car needs to be able to randomly repeat the same or similar route. So the next time around, the 99 gets trickled back. Another episode later, it gets trickled back. And finally, after a bunch of episodes, the reward gets all the way back to our initial state. And the car knows that this is the best path. So we can see that it's very important for the car to be able to find the goal as many times as possible during training in order to get the best path. So now let's talk about why the car got stuck near the bottom. I took the code from the previous tutorials and adapted it to mountain car continuous. So I know the code works. So let's look at why it didn't learn. This environment has a step limit of 1000, which is simply not enough for the car to randomly find a flag. Without being able to find a flag, the car simply learned to minimize its movement to minimize the penalty. And this is evident in the graph. On the left side, we have the penalty per stepped. We can see at the beginning, the car does some exploration and it's incurring a lot of penalty. And eventually we see that it settled up at the top and we can see that it never really collected much positive rewards. On the right side is the Epsilon graph. Epsilon decays to minimum at around a thousand episodes. But even if we do more exploration, with the 1000 step limit, we'll never learn anything better than what we have right now. Now I decided to bump the step limit up to 5000. Now how do I know 5000? From looking at the logs, I can see that the car is able to get to the flag within about two to 4,000 steps. So that's why I chose 5,000. But still, why is the car even worse than before? The problem is that the learning rate is too low. The learning rate is used to scale down the reward that gets carried back. And at point one, it's just too slow for this environment. If I give it more time to do exploration and slow down the epsilon decay, eventually it might be able to solve the environment and learn the best path, but it would take a really, really long time. Now, what if I bump up the learning way to really, really high? Well, it does learn and it's able to solve the map, but you saw at the beginning that it was jittering around. So learning was unstable. You can see on the graph that we finally entered positive reward territory, but instead of the graph flattening out at the top, there's still a lot of instability, meaning that sometimes the car isn't able to solve the map or sometimes the car is taking a long time to solve the map. Finally, at a learning rate of 0.9, the car is able to optimally solve this map. We can see that learning was fairly efficient and steady, and at the end, it's fairly stable. To recap, if the environment has a limit on the number of actions or steps that the agent can take, make sure you increase that limit so that the agent has enough opportunity to find the goal. Adjust the learning weight until you see a reasonable efficiency in how the agent is learning. 
and it's just the epsilon decay if you think that the agent needs more episodes. Once you see that the agent is reasonably able to solve the environment, make further adjustments to the learning rate and the epsilon decay rate until training time is reasonably efficient and that learning is stable.